Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Devine from Before You Play. And today we are doing something a little bit different. This is our first top 10 video, I think, right? It's not truly a top 10, but we'll explain a little bit more. Yes. Uh, this is 10 board games that got us into the hobby. Yes. And how we feel about them now. So we're going to kind of throw that in kind there. Kind of like a look back. Yeah. Yeah. So this came as a result of uh, so many of you who have emailed us or left comments on our videos introducing yourselves and explaining how you got into the hobby, which we really enjoy reading, by the way. Uh, and so we figured that, you know, we've never introduced ourselves over the past year. So this would be a good time to kind of explain how we got ourselves got into the hobby. Right? Yeah, yeah it's a good idea. So this, this is not a top 10, technically, because uh, we're not really ranking them in any order. It's more chronological order. Yeah. This is also not top 10 gateway games because it's not necessarily our favorite games that... It's just what we were exposed to, when we time. were exposed to. Yeah, yeah. what kind of uh, dragged us in into this, this hobby. Mm -hmm. We are splitting up the list. I have five, Naveen has five, and we're going to kind of go back and forth and just kind of explain it. Uh, but before we get started, I do want to mention some honorable mentions because um, for those of you who are wondering, yes, we are married. We celebrated our three years recently. And uh, before we actually met, I'd been playing a, a few board games that yeah. I didn't even know were a part of this huge hobby. So I do want to just kind of mention them. So uh, my honorable mentions are Bang, the card game, if you are familiar with that game. The card game, not the dice game. The card game, yeah. the aggressive game that makes you lose your friends <laughs> because uh, we used to play that in high school. You know, we never even questioned the fact that this was like a card game that was different than any of the other classic games. Yeah. But for some reason, we knew it. So in high school, we would play that game, me and my best friends, and, and, and until we weren't friends anymore that night, and we would play it again the next day. Uh, and so that, that's a game that we'd play a lot. Uh, another one for me was Killer Bunnies. That was a huge one. If any of you are familiar with that mm -hmm. game, our group was obsessed with that game. We had every expansion. And uh, I still have it, actually. It's in a big bin. It's in a big bin. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't play it anymore because it's just a, a ton of luck. And we didn't realize it back then. We just thought it was just so much fun. Yeah. And my, my last one uh, was Dominion. And so my one of my best friends who I've known since like kindergarten, he is actually the one that introduced me to all these games. He's the one that introduced us to a lot of the games that we're going to mention. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he introduced me to Dominion online. There was like, there's like an on, there's a website where you can play like with all the expansions. And I thought like, wow, somebody just made this online game <laughs> and it's amazing. Like Not realizing kind of, it was... Uh, not realizing that, copy game, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's like a card game with, with all these boxes and shuffle. expansions that you have to like shuffle yourself. But we used to play that like all the time. Um, and so these three games were kind of what kept me interested in board gaming. And this was all before we even met. Mm -hmm. Do you have any honorable mentions? <laughs> I do, but I'm going to be stoned through the streets if I mention these games. But <laughs> I will mention these games. Monopoly, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Trouble, like those kind of games, Shoots and Ladders when I was a kid. So you played Shoots and Ladders? Yeah, totally. We, we, That's cute. We had a bunch of these games, Candyland. So oh, when I was wow. a kid, we had a, a big stack of like your Milton Bradley, like those, yeah. those you know, old school uh, games that right. everyone kind of grew up with. Um, then as I, I got older, you know, I, I wasn't playing games anymore. And then when uh, our friend did reintroduce us to games, because I think I had that foundational childhood memory of playing games. You were into it. It like yeah. it was easier for me to springboard than if somebody you know that has never played games. Right. You know. And so. Naveen is also uh, what you like play poker. The poker. Yeah, player. I used to like uh, a lot of Texas Hold'em. Yeah, so, plays a lot yeah. of like uh, standard card games. Mm -hmm. So that is those are our um, honorable mentions, and I don't play any of those three <laughs> today. I would still yeah. play Dominion. Like that's a yeah, solid yeah, deck yeah. builder, that's but uh, I just don't. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into our list. Damn. So I have five, you have five. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to go first. Sure. Because uh, my... talking about chronological order. Yeah, chronologically, I yeah. have like an er the earliest game. So the first game on my list is Munchkin. <laughs> so also an honorable mention. <laughs> it's also kind of an honorable mention because the yeah. first time I played Munchkin was before I met him. Sure, yeah. And uh, the same friend introduced me to Munchkin and he had picked it up from like uh, Barnes and Noble or something. Mm -hmm. And he was like, there's this amazing game where you go through a dungeon and you fight, you know, whatever. I don't remember how to play it anymore. And, <laughs> and you can like ask each other for help. And when he introduced it to me, I thought it was the greatest game ever. I went online and looked for all of the holiday expansion packs 
just to have like the cute cards and um after we met yeah i forced naveen to play the adventure time adventure time one yes version That's making right. bacon pancakes yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so yeah so that was one of the another kind of early one that that got us interested uh how do i feel about that today well i had this box full of these expansions that i was mentioning and i tried my best to get rid of it so aggressively because you know once you start like playing more games in the hobby, you start realizing that you're no longer interested in those games. And so I don't play Munchkin anymore, but it did serve a nice uh, spot in my life. And at we the did time. give it to somebody else who's now enjoying that game. Yes. Or ideally, they, they're enjoying it and has passed it on to somebody else. And that is part of the, yeah. the, the joy of this hobby, right? Like if you once you're kind of over a game, you give it to somebody and they rediscover it and it becomes something happy for them. Yeah, maybe so. it's their gateway now. That is what happened with Munchkin. Your turn. Okay, sure. Uh, so this is a little bit out of order just so that we can have like this ping pong back and forth. <laughs> Otherwise, Monique would say four things in a row. Uh, but for me, it was Splendor. Yes. So Splendor was my true gateway game, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, same friend brought it out before uh, we were going to go on a, on a vacation together. He brought it down and sat me down and we basically played a three player game of it. And I was like, what the heck is this? This yeah. is not like roll a die, move, and see what happens. The artwork, the the tactic... Uh, the, the artwork sold you? <laughs> the, well, yeah, yeah. I, I, like, this is not I'm like, you know, cartoonish, like uh, sliding up and down a ladder or, yeah, you yeah. know. So uh, the chips, you know, just like the, the feeling those chips and strategizing uh, everything that, that... I still like that game a lot. We still have it in our collection. Splendor is something that I know has kind of gotten heat over the years. Uh, just because it was such a popular game. Whenever there's a popular game, there are going to be people aggressively on both sides. Like, of the that's coin. not a game. It's so, like, why? <laughs> yeah, it is a game. What do you mean? We actually still really enjoy it. Yeah. It's, it's here somewhere. Um, and fun fact. This is a very fun fact. Naveen is a champion of Splendor. <laughs> that's why I have to defend it. <laughs> one day. <laughs> I have to validate one, my championship. I think it was on an international <laughs> tabletop day. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. We entered a, uh, a a Splendor tournament and oh gosh, I don't even know why I entered because it's like you have to play like four straight games of it and then it's like, you know, tournament style and whoever kind of wins in the brackets wins like the grand prize, which was this like glorious play, play mat. Yeah, which we didn't have. Which we didn't have yeah. at the time. So we entered and the best moment was when they were announcing the winners, Naveen just happened to be in the bathroom washing his hands. And so he didn't know that this was going on. But right when they were like, and the grand prize winner, <laughs> Naveen, he like just came, comes out of the bathroom and everyone starts clapping. <laughs> and it's this like amazing moment with Naveen just walking through the crowd. Oh my God. Like, yes, I had no idea. I'm the Splendor winner. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. So anyway, fun fact. Well, I, I, I knew I really won though Splendor. because I didn't lose a game. Yeah, he didn't. I won every game single game day. we played. Yeah. Anyway, that's Splendor. That's, so that's a why story. I defend Splendor. Yeah. Because I won. But Splendor it was definitely one of the earlier games that aggressively got us interested in more. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have, and this is a game that's probably a little bit before Splendor, uh, Seven Wonders. So this is a, a game that's, I think a lot of people, a lot of people um, consider it a, one of the games that got them into the hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the same friend came over one <laughs> Just Thanksgiving. Just assume it's the same dude every yeah, single time. Yeah, it's the same, this guy, we've been best friends since we were like three or four. So he, he spent Thanksgiving with my family and I one year and he brought over this game and, with his partner. And so the three of us played it and I thought like, wow, this game is amazing. And at the time I had only known Dominion and I was playing Dominion online. So after he left, I remember calling Naveen because we didn't spend Thanksgiving together yet mm -hmm. and thinking like, where can I play this online? Like, is there a place <laughs> where I can find it online? And at the time there was no, I, I don't think like Board Game Arena or like all those other websites were like actively. Um, Just our knowledge base of resources in board gaming. We didn't slammed. even know about BGG at the time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We didn't know VGG, so I could, obviously I couldn't find it online. Uh, but that that game like really stuck with us. Mm -hmm. It's funny because um, that same friend came over again a few months later, and we played it together. And we mm -hmm. totally we really struggled with the rules <laughs> yeah. in Seven Wonders. It's like so the top left is what you yeah. pay, <laughs> it's and so the bottom funny. is what you get. Right. Okay, I think I get it. And then like two rounds later, so I pay the bottom. <laughs> like it's like. 
constantly so, going on. If you ever feel bad about not being able to understand how to play a Lacerda game, just remember that we struggled with Seven Wonders. Yes. <laughs> and then the whole na buying from your neighbor, it's like, oh, yeah. so I can buy from you? Such a strange concept for, for us. For a dollar? I don't get it. How do you feel about it now? So it was in our collection for a long time. Mm -hmm. We had a couple expansions and then we sold it or we moved on from it. Because it doesn't play it too. Doesn't and play we it had Seven Wonders too. Duel, yeah. or we have Seven Wonders we Duel. We have Seven so Wonders Duel, yeah. We were like, let's, it's a big box. Let's just give it to somebody who will play it. Yeah, I think we had like this kind of like gateway mentality with it. And then uh, we have it back in our collection. <laughs> it yeah, came back. It came back. Like a boomerang. So so we have it and uh, it's yeah. a very good game. What can I say? It's it, been it's been reprinted and re... Uh, I think they, yeah. they like upped some of the artwork recently, like in the past year. It's weird. It's so. like, it's one of those games that if somebody suggests it, you're probably not going to be like, yes, I'll play it. But if it's like you find yourself in the situation of playing it, you're going to find yourself enjoying it. Yeah. You know? Right, right, right. Uh, and so if you ever kind of get stale with Seven Wonders, look up the rules for Seven Blunders. That's another way of playing it. It's exact See who opposite, gets yeah. a, the lowest number of points. And you? Uh, the next one for me is a Ticket to Ride. Yeah. Base Ticket to Ride. That's um, right. My first train game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that came... Yeah, I think that was... That's right. It came like right after Seven Wonders. Mm -hmm. I think it was we played Seven Wonders and then we were like... One day we were like, let's go and try to buy a new board game. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how we discovered it, but but yeah. So that that was a, a game that we found ourselves playing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Just the base map, and then we actually bought some expansion maps and never played them. And never played them because we were now <laughs> starting to to get into the hobby, you know. Yeah, but Ticket to Ride was a game that lasted a while for us. Uh, we kept it in our collection after a while, mainly for when other people come over, because it really is like the perfect game to teach people who don't. Play games, play games yeah. because it's so kind of easy to get into and they end up more often than not enjoying it. So uh, Naveen got kind of tired of it before I did. Yeah. And we had decided to get rid of it. Because so. we st at this point we had started getting more games mm -hmm. and more strategic games and just right. fun factor wise. And it's just after a while you get kind of not tired of a game, but like I know that's what you yeah, said. Yeah, you just kind of move on. Move on from move the game. Move on yeah. from them. So that, that's a game that I would still play if people like really, really wanted to play them, especially some of the uh, newer iterations of it because mm -hmm. they kind of switch up how the gameplay works. Um, how, how about you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would play it, yeah. I wouldn't okay. say no. I think there's very few games that would be like, I will not play that game. That's true. Yeah. That is true. Okay, so next up for me is um, a lovely game called Smash Up. <laughs> Smash Up was, gosh, I really fell in love with that game. Same friend introduced it to us, and uh, I made everybody play it. Like, you did. <laughs> I did. I'm kind of embarrassed about it now. You did force because it. Why? I was just so aggressive about that game. Every Anytime anybody came over and my sister, my sister has been so kind to us <laughs> in board gaming because she doesn't really enjoy board games as much as we do. But anytime she'd come over, she'd say, I know you want to play a board game. So mm -hmm. let's just pull out Smash Up. And I wanted to have every expansion for it. If you're not familiar with it, it's a game that you can kind of, uh, you take a faction and your faction has its own deck. You take two different factions. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. You take two different factions, you mix them together, and now you have like ninja ghosts or like fairy dragons. I don't know. Those I, are I not real factions. Now, yeah. I think yeah. ninja ghosts is a thing. <laughs> and then uh, based off of the factions that you use, they have their own kind of personalities when you mix in the deck. And it's you're a just very trying take to, game. It's a very yeah. Well, yeah. you're just trying to score the bases by putting your cards in these areas mm -hmm. in a variety of ways. But uh, I really loved it for a long time. I was like, I'm gonna get the big geeky box. I'm gonna <laughs> put all the expansions in it. Uh, and then one day, I just was over it. That was the end. <laughs> that was the end. Before, we were able to acquire the big, big geeky box. I Yeah, I enjoyed my plays of it. Uh, but I think that was one that, again, I think I was kind of over it before, before you me, were. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I kept bringing it out every chance I could get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, that was Smash Up. Uh, okay, so the next one for me is a game. It's a little card game called Just Desserts. <laughs> and it is a super basic card game now that I am way deeper in the hobby. Uh, but I picked this up at my very first international tabletop game That's right. uh, day. Uh, we went to our local gaming store here uh, in Fullerton, California, and um, just grabbed a random thing. I think it was like eight bucks. I was like, all right, let's just, let's just buy this game. <laughs> Naveen right. was like, I like desserts. <laughs> yeah, I like desserts. Okay. Uh, let's, let's get it. Read the back. I was like, yeah, okay, let's play it. So yeah. it's, it's basically a game where uh, you have these people and and these people all have these certain uh, desserts that they like and you right. have to gather these ingredients so it's, you're basically uh 
collecting resources to satisfy these different desserts. Are they even customers? <laughs> They're are customers. They? Customers, yeah, customers come to the table yeah. and you have a hand of like food cards and you're trying to satisfy as many of the guests that you can. Right. And it's like if you have... Uh, each customer has like a different type of favorite or something. So yeah. if you have like one of each type, you win, something right. like that. Yeah. It's like very dependent on which desserts you draw. There's like very little strategy, but <laughs> yeah. he loved I it. I did love it. For a very long time. It's like, we have friends over, we just had dinner, let's play just desserts, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so. That was it. Um, yeah, we won't It is no it. longer in our collection. It's, yeah, it's, it's another no game longer. that has now moved on to another home. Right. So it's not going to get a Filler Friday <laughs> coverage, but if you're interested and it sounds fun, look up Just Desserts. Yeah, it's out there. All right, so we are kind of chugging along here. The next one for me, ooh, this is a good one. The next one for me is The Downfall of Pompeii. So this, this is like shortly after we got Just Desserts, we kept on going to that specific store. Yeah, I think it's because of that like, this store has got the good stuff. They had just desserts. <laughs> yeah. So let's keep going back there and see what they got this week. Yeah. Not realizing, actually, that we have our own local gaming store that's, like, much closer. We mm -hmm. kept on going to that one, and uh, they're very nice people over there. Yeah, super nice. So they, have a, they had a demo. They have a demo table where you can kind of pick out a game and just play it. And Naveen is a fan of, like, you know that, like, kind of Euro-y artwork on games that people might consider to be a little bit dry. If, if it's a box that somebody else would pass on, I'd probably pick it up and like yeah. want to read it. It like, catches his eye. He just yeah. like loves those The boring boxes or like the, the, the art style that looks kind of dated. Dated. That's I wanna, a good I want to see it. Like, I, I want to know what this is. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why. Downfall of Pompeii caught his eye for that reason. <laughs> and we set it up. It had this volcano. And if you're not familiar with the game, you're basically trying to fill Pompeii with people with these cards and then at some point the volcano is going to explode as it did uh -huh. and you're trying to get as many of your people out yeah. before the volcano gets you and there's some take that because uh whoever draws like the volcano chits can choose which people which are way the lava get. flows yeah which way the lava flows with within reason yes um and so we played that game at this at that store and immediately bought it yeah we were like hooked mm -hmm. and we brought it home and for the next like three days every day we would play it like back to back yeah like, twice a day twice a day for the day. next three days mm -hmm. uh so we were really hooked by that game if you haven't played that game it's i think that that game probably stands the test of time it's not like other games up to this point i haven't really played a game that's quite like that one yeah because in, in board gaming there's a lot of games that's like oh yeah i really like that game and now this new one came out improved on this yeah. one so that means this one is now kind of obsolete, obsolete exactly but that one just fills its own little bubble yeah yeah so we still have it we still have it see dated art style but fantastic <laughs> gameplay you know it's it was the it was more the title that drew me in when we we're going up and down and just looking at everything downfall of pompeii i mean now that i look at it the artwork is actually yeah pretty good it is good but can you escape the inferno good question that is a game that is still in our collection we haven't played it in a while but maybe we will play maybe it today. today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> now that it's out, maybe today. Yeah. Okay, the next one for me is a social deduction game called One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Have you heard of it? We clearly it... <laughs> still have it in our possession. Um, do we play it still? That's the question. Do we still play it though? Um, not so much. This well, is. If you're not familiar with it, oh, yeah, yeah. it is a social deduction game. It's very, very popular. So if you are really into the hobby, chances are you've at least heard of it. Mm -hmm. And it's a game where it's pretty much like Mafia, if you're familiar with that game, but everybody has a role and everybody goes to bed. There's like a narrator on the phone and they tell you kind of what you do. If you're the robber, you can switch out your uh, identity with somebody else. And you don't want to be the werewolf because after everybody wakes up, everybody, the villager's job is to try to figure out who the werewolves are. Right. It's not so much that you don't want to be the werewolf. It's if you're the werewolf, you want to make sure that they, at the very end of the game, when there's an accusation as to who the werewolves are, you want to get the onus off of you. That's absolutely you wanna, right. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. There are people out there who love being the yeah, werewolf. Yeah, I, I like being the werewolf. I was projecting yeah. because yeah. I hate yeah. being yeah. the werewolf. Totally projecting. So, uh, Naveen's right. After yeah. the timer is up, everybody casts a vote. And if you're the villagers, you want to blame the werewolf you want to actually find find the identify werewolf, who it is yeah. one of the werewolves and if you're a werewolf you want to have everybody be a pointy at a villager you want to convince the whole group that somebody else is a werewolf we would have like six or seven people together playing it and just constantly constantly yeah. playing it so we we are one of those gamers who fell in love with this game 
uh, it's just such a good. We brought it to like your family gatherings yeah. and got his cousins, his younger cousins hooked oh, on it. Oh, they love it. Yeah, they love it. We've gifted it to people, and it, people always kind of love it. It's just a really fun way to break the ice too. Mm -hmm. So like, if you are maybe have like a work gathering or a meeting and nobody knows each other, you play this game, and now everybody's friends. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so do we play it that much anymore? Um, even pre-COVID, you know, I think we were kind of stop stop playing this. I this, like the game still. Yeah. For some reason, for me, you know, I'll play like two rounds, and after two rounds, I'm kind of like ready to move on to the next game or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm I'm still willing to play it. It's just I don't know if I want to do those like sessions, right. you know, those long sessions the anymore. Long sessions. Yeah, like yeah, we would yeah. seriously play this for like two hours, back to back to we back would. to back. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm in the same boat. I still really enjoy it, but up to a up to a certain extent, and then we move on. Mm -hmm. All right. So my last was truly the one that uh, kicked off the rest of it for me, okay. at least specifically for me. And so if, because we haven't really been doing a good job as to telling you where we are in the timeline, we, we actually started like truly diving into board games in 2015. And the reason why was because I was in my master's program and I had just finished, I graduated 2015 and I had to study for my board's exam. And I was so stressed out. I had moved down to Southern California and I didn't really have many friends outside of like my classmates. So Naveen was like, you, you need to go make some friends. <laughs> so I discovered meetup.com and like the easiest way to like find people was through board games. Like mm -hmm. they have an actual like board game section meetup where you can find like groups that are gathering. I found a group and I made some friends in that group and somebody introduced me to this game, which is Star Realms. And so if you're not familiar with Star Realms, it is a, I, th I think it plays more than two, but we only played. Does it play more than two? I think it's intended to be like a two player okay. game, but you can play it with four. Can you? <laughs> See, we've never played it with okay. more than two, but it shines at two. And it is a deck builder. I guess I should mention that it's themed in space. So there are like spaceships, like there frigates are frigates and stuff stations. like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And your goal is to try to deplete your opponent's life. I think everybody starts at like a life of 50 and you're attacking your opponent. And every time you attack, their life goes down a certain amount, depending on the cards that you yeah, play. And there's like defense, you can get stronger attack, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And as soon as your opponent loses all their lives, you win. And I was hooked on that game. She would kill me in that game. <laughs> she would win 10 out of 10. I was just like, I, I can't beat you in this game. So. Yeah, Naveen wasn't a fan. Um, I was ready to move on. Well, to be fair, Naveen doesn't really like deck builders as much as I, I do. Yeah, that mechanism for some reason is just not my favorite. He's always like, so then you reshuffle your hand and that's that's it. You keep on going and keep reshuffling. I'm just not good in deck builders. Like now, I think now, you know, five years after that i understand you got to get rid of that little one coin card that thing's just clogging <laughs> your deck but like for some reason i'd be like but what if i need that one coin you know like so i, I would not you know oust cards he doesn't so like would, he likes to he's a hoarder not in real hoarder, life but yeah. he's a card hoarder card so he hoarder, doesn't like yeah. getting rid I of want the option of one coin yeah <laughs> so yeah. for me star realms kind of I, I played that so much i told everybody about it um, but unfortunately we don't own it anymore. Uh, I think it was more because Naveen was kind of over it and it, we were, it wasn't getting played. There's so. a theme here. Naveen's over the games <laughs> before you. To be fair, I feel like in every household where there's like a couple dynamic, if one person is not into a certain game, then it's just not going to get played. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of people can kind of relate to that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. That was my last one. What about you? Okay. For uh, the final. The final one. It was, this is the one that really, man, I mean, Splendor really did get me, but this yeah, is the one Yeah, I, I would that, say out of the entire list, Splendor was the one that was, Naveen was really, yeah, like, really into. Yeah, really into. But mine is Pandemic. Yeah. Pandemic, yeah. Base uh, Pandemic. Base Pandemic. Standard. The problem solving, uh, I like co-op games. I know there's a lot of people out there, like, iffy about co-ops. I love them. Oh, Naveen loves um, co-ops. Probably because of people like me, you don't like them quarterbacking like you should do this you should do that i'm sorry i'm that guy maybe kind of quarterback you don't quarterback that quarterback i'm like that you much. should probably do that if you'd like to do that i mean we've played a few co-ops on our channel so i don't know maybe you can tell us if he's a quarterbacker but i don't feel like like that i think you I just, just have like to sound work. reason you, you know? just like to work together i do like to work he's, together he's a yeah. team player i'm a team player I played sports growing up so i just like that idea yeah like team um and so yeah pandemic is one of my favorite games. Um, introduced by the same friend. Introduced by the same friend. Yeah, you'll see him one day. Yeah, he's one he's day. amazing. But he uh, he was like, yeah, you you guys are healthcare professionals, and so is he actually. So he was like, uh, you might you might enjoy this one because it's about 
curing disease mm -hmm. all over the world. All over the world, yeah. A pandemic. Um, so we we actually purchased that one without trying it. We just yeah, like, just like just it's like it. everything he's he's told us is good. Let's just get it. Yeah, and yeah. for a very long time, we were playing it incorrectly. <laughs> yeah, what were we, we doing wrong? We, there was something uh, we were doing wrong. I think we did it. We eradicated the disease in a, a way that you're not supposed to. It's like if you start the game without a disease on, on the board, you eradicate it. Yeah, something, there was something like, that. like that. We were eradicating remember. diseases incorrectly. Yeah. And so we were just making it so much easier for ourselves. So, but we were really in love with that game. Mm -hmm. That that was a, a one that we would play all the time. Yep. So do you play it now, the base game? Well, we don't have it anymore. But because we do like the uh what are those called? The legacy games. Yeah, yeah. the legacy games. We've we've played all the way through season one. Love that one. Uh, we won't talk anything about it. Uh, we are in the middle of season two right now. We've been in the middle of season two for like a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's hard with the legacy games because once you stop, it's like, wait, what happened in those first few months? We need to kind yeah. of re refresh on the story. And uh, that time to go back and refresh for some very reason. Daunting. It's very daunting. But I know the second we get into it, we're going to be into it. Yeah. So Especially now that Pandemic Legacy Season 0 is, is coming out. Coming so out, yeah. um, we need to finish that at some point. But for that reason, we don't have base Pandemic anymore. Because we could probably just pull out Legacy and play it as base. As base, yeah. And also because in playing Pandemic Legacy, you have pl you play the game at least 12 times over and over Certain again. Times, yeah. So we don't really pull it anymore. Mm -hmm. But that is, those are 10 games more than 10 games actually that got us into the hobby. Yeah, that's it. Um, after that, uh, I started going to conventions before Naveen did. Mm -hmm. and uh, Local conventions. Local conventions, yeah. yeah. We have our local convention here. That's It's really, uh, really kind of amazing if you're in some California area. It's called Strategicon. But uh, I started going in and then Naveen started following after. Yeah, I would go for like, like so it'd be like a three or four day uh, thing. I would go for just a day. Yeah, he was like, like, I don't know, the whole weekend. I don't know if I can go a whole weekend. Yeah. And now he nowadays he's like, oh, the convention's coming up. We should book a hotel room. We should take Friday off, you know. So he's really into them now. But those are what. What is the game that got you into heavy gaming? That's a good question. Goa. Yeah, this is a, a bonus. Game, a game called Goa. So Goa is a Rudiger Dorn game. Uh, I have the game that I'm talking about. This is Goa. This is like I said, a Rudiger Dorn game. I I think this came out like in. 2004 or something like See that. See that artwork? Yeah. So oh. Naveen. <laughs> yes. Well, somebody had suggested this at a convention. Yeah. Uh, and they sat me down and they taught it and we played a four player game. And this is a game that, you know, after talking about all these other ones, the level of thinking and like what you're doing, the player interaction um, really it elevated. It reached like, new heights. It reached new heights. And this, after playing this game is where I was like, wow, there's, there's a lot more uh, out there in terms of mm -hmm. board gaming like yeah. there's this whole culture of board gaming and so this one is like super out of print so this is staying in the collection for yeah. a very 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 long time I, I remember he tried this on that one day that he was at a convention and then after that was when he really took a deep dive into board gaming yes. so this is a really good one the game that got me into heavy gaming was kanban mm -hmm. so kanban. you know about all our love for let's read games yep but that is it. Those are more than 10 games that got us into the hobby. Uh, it is five years later. We are still going strong. I don't really see this hobby kind of dying out for us. No, yeah. So, um, and I think I'm sure a lot of you can relate. But for anybody who, who hasn't emailed us or commented, we would love to hear your story. Uh, how, what got you into gaming? What were your favorite games that really kind of like secured this hobby for you? please uh, share in the comments below or send us an email. We would love to hear your thoughts. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like Monique said, please let us know in the comments below what are the games that kind of got you trapped in the hobby. <laughs> trapped. Trapped. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.